Few degrees, getting closer to uh, the 23 that I predicted, certainly better than 14 that the weatherman gave us anyway. It's Thursday, 24th of August, and believe me, absolutely love, love, loving today's feature artist. But first of all, let me do this. Galaxy. Galaxy. That's right, you're right here at Galaxy 107 FM and I tell you what, it is an absolute pleasure to have you. It really, really is. If you're a first time viewer, welcome. Nice to have you as well, believe me. Uh, tell you what, why not do this? At least consider it, okay? Sub, thumb, bell. Bingo. Uh, bell notifications when we do have very important artists and today we're meeting Amber Heyday. And you're going to love her, you really, really are. I tell you what, there's something, why not become part of the family? <clears throat> Subscribe. And believe me, uh, we call the family here at Galaxy The Noise, simply because it is getting louder and louder exponentially every day. We're in every English-speaking country in the world, some that aren't too, by the way, and we'll take that. We really will. Uh, by the way, the thumbly thing, you know what to do with that, right? Yeah, get epileptic with a gab at the death, absolutely. We're going to kick it off. Amber Heyday and Matty McKay, I need you right here at Galaxy. Good morning. So that gives us a moment to get to know each other. Sounds good. Very cool. I tell you what, this may or may not be like any other interview you've ever done before. <laughs> And or maybe want to do again, to be honest with you, but um, I promise you, you will come out the other end alive. Sounds great. Nice. <laughs> nice, I like that. Hi. <laughs> I absolutely love that, I really, really do. Um, Oopsie, what am I doing with this I don't stick? know, what are you doing with <laughs> that stick? Yeah, it's a bit long, I'm sorry. You do something. <laughs> do, do you remember Star Wars? Yes. You remember Darth Vader? He had that like wandy it's thing. I do. Yeah, that's like Barbara in this wand. It really is. <laughs> You've got to be quick to get out of the way, otherwise you might lose an appendage. <laughs> She's quick, I that's tell good. you. Something that you should definitely know if you're in her, you know, hitting range, that's for sure. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> um, it's a hard hit area. you you got to get out of the way. You really do. <clears throat> oh, Kaylee's on board. Nice to have Kaylee on board. It really, really is. Bo Gregory's there as well. Donnie Coulter. Hello, Donnie. Nice to have you on board. I'm going to steal your device because mine isn't doing enough. No, it doesn't give you... Um, it doesn't. Barbara, you might hear some loud, loud noises in the background here. we got a thunderstorm going on here that's... Making a, as long as the power a... doesn't go out. Love, love, love thunderstorms. Really, really. I love Mother Nature kicking it up. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I don't love it so much when it ruins my garden, but we have, uh, we so far so good, so. Cool. I'm not going to. Awesome. Yeah. Have you ever been hit by lightning? No, and I really hope never to be. What about uh, yourself? Yeah, I've been done by that. No way. Yeah, I was on a golf course on a perfectly fine day. Honestly, out of nowhere, I find myself under the trees. I'm not kidding. Two guys that I was playing golf with at the time, they came over and went, were you thinking of cheating? <laughs> no, that's terrible. <laughs> I had smoke coming out of my hair. I, honestly, uh, I had a very, very expensive Italian watch, almost as, as prestigious as a Rolex. And uh, it never went again, so I took it to the jewellers, and the jeweller says, what the heck did you do to it? It's literally one block of metal now. And I went, oh seriously? So I told him, and he goes, you know something? Oh. That saved your life. Oh, wow. <laughs> true, true event. It happened. Story. Let's go live to the desk. And uh, Amber, we're in every country in the world, okay? Um.
That's right, you're right, here we go, C107 FM, and believe me, today I'm absolutely elated, very humbled to meet Amber Hayday. Hello, Amber, nice to meet you. Hi. Nice to meet you too. Amber, believe me, uh, you've been making a huge sensation here at Galaxy, and believe me, I'm finding it rather difficult to get through a breakfast show without playing at least one of your songs. Why is this happening? I would love to know that myself. I'm just hoping that it's just the really good music that I'm putting out. Hopefully it's that, but either way, I'm very, very grateful for it and thankful to you guys for spending my stuff. It means a whole lot. Well, I tell you what, Amber, believe me, it is an absolute honor to be able to play your music now. I've been an engineer for almost 40 years. Almost, okay, uh, and it, I hear bands every day, uh, Barbara gets between 150, 200 submissions a day that we go through as well, uh, and it isn't often that I find something or somebody that I absolutely want to know more about. It, your music encapsulated my imagination, and believe me, I have worked with some of the best bands in the world, I've really had toured the world with a couple of them, and I've worked in some of the most prestigious recording studios as well. I've been a front of house and a recording engineer. And when I first heard your music, I thought, you know, I want to know more. So t tell me about yourself. Now, I know that you're a singer-songwriter and a climber of mountains. Climber of mountains, really? Tell me about yeah. that. Uh, so I guess about eight or nine years ago now, I just decided to get into hiking. I live very close to the Rocky Mountains here in Alberta, Canada, and they are, um, I'm very fortunate to live where I do because people travel from all over the world to come and witness the beauty that is my backyard. So we decided to, my husband and I get into hiking about um, eight, eight or nine years ago, and it's just become our, our first love outside of our family. So we just actually took our kids uh, this past weekend and did a whole bunch of hiking with them. So um, I've done all kinds of backcountry hikes that you can imagine. Um, seen some incredible, incredible sights, and it, it really is uh, a, a huge inspiration for me. I get a lot of my song ideas when I'm hiking, and I just find it's a good place to reconnect and disconnect at the same time. It allows me the opportunity to kind of push away the outside world and really focus on being present and, and creatively being present as well. So I can't say enough about it. It's definitely a huge, huge passion of mine, and, and I'll continue to try to conquer as many mountains as I can. Absolutely fantastic, believe me. I used to be a deer stalker, but unfortunately the old legs these days won't let me do it as much as I would love to. Uh, but that meant basically I could go from one end of New Zealand to the other end and not see a single road, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> love that idea, I really, really do. Uh, now, having said that, I want to give a shout out to Cheryl Schofield and Kaylee Amanda. Yes, from Catavano Promotion. I love that name, I really. It's very, very Italian sounding. Uh, don't you think, Amanda? Yeah, uh, so they've been amazing. Uh, they, they took on my newest single to help me do uh, the radio pitching kind of promotional end of things for that. And I've known Kaylee and Cheryl for quite a few years. They're a staple in our industry here in Canada and our country music industry. So um, when it came time to look to get uh, somebody on board to help me with this single um, it was awesome to be able to work with them and to be able to grow with them as well uh, they've both been absolutely awesome and accommodating and they put their heart and soul into what they do and to me that means everything so absolutely and I'm right there with you too we love Cheryl we've known Cheryl for well a number of years let's put it that way and Kaylee uh, just stepping up right now you're representing lady you really are keep up the good work and keep sending me some good artists I double dare you on that one uh, and mm -hmm. uh, Amber Hayday is joining us right now, coming out of Stony Plains, Alberta. Is it really Stony and Stony Plains? Yeah, Stony Plain, Alberta. That's where I live. That's where I grew up, and I've kind of moved around since my childhood, but I inevitably found my way back here, and um, this is home for me. It's always been home, always will be home. So, yeah, this is where I'm planting my roots and, you know, spreading my wings at the same time. <laughs> yeah, planting and spreading, uh, yeah, that, that's a good form, you know, very confusing unless you're dyslexic like me, but you never know. Uh, anyway, we opened up the show with I Need You, and you were uh, co-sharing this particular track with Matty McKay. Tell me about uh, Matty McKay, sorry, and uh, or is, is it Maddie. Maddie, yeah, Matty McKay, uh, and then tell me about the lyrics, how did you come to the lyrics, so tell me about Matty first. 
So Maddie McKay is uh, an incredible uh, singer, songwriter, producer from right here in Alberta. He is actually based out of Calgary, and he's been a friend of mine for years. Uh, I have learned a lot from him over the years. We kind of um, uh, he was definitely one of the first people I got to know within the industry when I first started getting into country music and getting into the scene. And so when I was when I went to my producer and we were doing this record, uh, the EP Holding On to a Memory, I had kind of said to him that the song sounded like it was missing something and he really thought it needed um, almost like a duet, a male counterpart. So I knew without a doubt that I wanted it to be Maddie. I knew our voices uh, blended extremely well together. Again, he's a good friend. so. It was just uh, a shoe, and it was something I didn't have to think twice about. And I'm so glad I didn't, because he just adds this beautiful, soft, um, it's a love song, right? And, and that's exactly what it sounds like, and that's exactly what I wanted it to be. So. Yeah. And when I Need You, I wrote it about my husband. My best friend, Johnny, and I, we do a lot of writing together. So, <laughs> Sippin' on Summer, I Need You, Love You Like You're Leaving, like almost every song, pretty close to every song off my EP, Holding On To Memory, we wrote together. And I Need You was a song, his name is Johnny, which is where the Johnny and June reference kind of came from in the song. And uh, yeah, I just, it was a love song and I wanted to write something that um, was a little different. So, uh, you know, using the comparisons of soup needing a spoon and things like that, it was just a little bit different, but to me, that's that. That's who I am. So it was nice to bring that out in that song. And it's, of course, it's my husband's favorite song. So. <laughs> <laughs> I did see a photo of your husband. I've got to be honest with you. He sort of looked like he should have been in the uh, Sahara Desert discovering stuff. <laughs> what are those outfits? You know what um, I mean? I work in Moomba, Australia. So he's uh, he's not an unfamiliar with the desert. That's for sure. And he is a bearded redneck through and through so any <laughs> nature survival outdoors that is my husband to a T. so he's the sahara desert look for sure <laughs> well you, you know something uh he may be interested in this uh but i did get that steve irwin vibe from his clothing i really did but i knew steve irwin oh cool yeah but unfortunately you know uh, what happened to him right yes yeah. yeah he's got a place in his heart for stingrays that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> now his son and his kids are following in his footsteps. I, I see his son all over social media all the time now doing the same thing his dad was doing. So that's that's pretty cool to carry on a legacy like that. Well, Bindi was still a little baby when I very first knew Steve, if you know what I mean. So it's been a while since I've seen Bindi grow up. Gosh. <laughs> uh, family of her own now, believe me. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a long time, it really has. But uh, I, I did get that vibe from Johnny. So, uh, you know, when you show him this video, and you will get a copy of this video, uh, apologize to him for me, will you? Yeah, so Johnny is who I write with, Preston. That's my husband's name. Johnny and Preston. So Sorry if I confused you there, but yeah, so so Preston, uh, I will def I'm sure he's listening right now, but uh, he's probably laughing upstairs because he's the one who's holding the kids down so they're not down here, like, causing all of the chaos, but yeah, so for sure find that rather entertaining of that, I have no doubt. <laughs> Very nice, Johnny, and uh, I'm going to ask uh, Amber to give you a poke in the eye later when she sees you, okay? <laughs> just, just, you know, because I'm a Kiwi and I ask stuff like that. Uh, Gail Hammond is watching, legendary Gail Hammond, and of course uh, from the Hammond Brothers, they're going to be in India very, very shortly, uh, doing shows over there. I wish them all the best. I really, really do. Uh, now, at the same time, uh, love you like you're leaving. Okay, who's leaving? Uh, at that time, I... I draw inspiration from everywhere. So a lot of the songs that I write, um, they're not pertaining to necessarily my story. Uh, quite a few of them are the stories of the people around me or something that one of my friends is going through or that I saw on social media or whatever it might be. And actually Johnny, um, my co-writer, he had come up with the song title, Love You Like You're Leaving. He just thought it was really cool. I completely agreed with him. And then it just kind of like spiraled from there. A lot of the times we get an idea and we can usually write a song within an hour or two and I believe this one took us about 45 minutes from start to finish to get it on paper and it was just one of those songs that you get it kind of gets stuck in your head a little bit it's got a good 
a, a cool feeling to it, and it's got a, you know, the love you like you're leaving. It's exactly that. When you, you know, so you think somebody's going to be leaving you, and you're, you want them to stay, you know, so you're going to do everything in your power to make them stay. And that's kind of where the concept came from of love you like you're leaving. You know, Amber, over the years that I've been doing this, and I've been doing this quite a while now, believe me, not only for this radio station, but for government radio stations uh, up and down the country, uh, I, when I talk to bands and they say, hey, listen, Grant, you know, uh, I did it in about 45 minutes. I did it on a McDonald's napkin, stuff like that. <laughs> These are the songs that have longevity. They have the earworm, just incidentally, that everybody seems to identify with. This one is no different. Amber Hayday is joining us here at Galaxy. Love you like you're leaving. <laughs> Hey, you feeling, Amber? Are you okay? Good, yeah, doing great. Nice. I see Cheryl Schofield is watching. I better be a good boy now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Cheryl on the south side. Hey, Cheryl. Uh, Amber, hey, by any chance, are you a vegan? No. You're not. Okay. Uh, believe me, I ask everybody. I'm trying to figure this one out. Okay. Please. Have you ever tried a vegan sausage? I have not. No, neither have I, but yeah, I'm trying to find out whether they're made of real vegans or not. <laughs> yeah, you have to ask a vegan now, because as it stands right now, I've got some chicken in the oven, so I'm... <laughs> I'm, I'm you, know, <laughs> you, you know what, Ember, I actually have met and spoken to a, um, a real vegan, <clears throat> and I did say to her, you know, do you guys go out at night? Do you meet, go to the pub, you know, have a few drinks and stuff like that? And she goes, yeah, yeah, why? I says, well, the only place I ever see is on the news. <laughs> hey, John. Look, you, the, I have quite a few vegans myself, um, but, I, you know, like, Oops. we live where we have Alberta beef, which is, in my opinion, some of the best beef that you can get your hands on. And I would find myself hard-pressed to... <laughs> try to give that up in my lifetime I think so I like me a good steak that's for sure <laughs> well let, let's be honest if, if vegans go out to the pub could you imagine if they got upset with each other after having a few drinks would they go out to the car park for a bit of a knuckle up uh, would they call it a beef <laughs> I don't think so I think no. they have to refer to it as something else okay well if you, if you, can't tell you what that would be if, <laughs> if, 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 a... if you got a slap in the face would it you know be a, a slap in the chops no 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 okay fair enough uh, look be, the reason just a slap in, slap in the teeth <laughs> or slap in the mouth one of the two <laughs> The reason I'm trying to find out about the vegan sausages, I was upset when I found out that girl guide biscuits were made of real girl guides, which <laughs> scary. Yeah. Two news to me. I had no idea. True story here, Amber, is that Johnson and Johnson, you know the product, right? Mm -hmm. They do. They've got me on the blacklist. They won't return my calls. They won't return my texts, my phone. Yeah, nothing. They just. No, all I did was I asked one of the hierarchy executives there, how many babies goes in a bottle? It says, it, it, says it right there, baby oil. Too many. I they probably can't answer that for you. Yeah, well, I think you got upset. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're blacklisted, I would say that's probably a safe assumption. That, that's a good <laughs> assumption, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. You know, John, you're quite right. John Peter is joining us too, by the way. And uh, he says a slap in the chops is better than a kick in the veggies. You are so right there. You know, you don't want your gang bag being whacked around, do you? Absolutely not. <laughs> really. Uh, let me just turn that down a bit. 
Sorry about that, Amanda. Uh, Amber, we, we have so many people that are, are following you right now from around the world. We really, really do. You're a superstar here at Galaxy, and people, uh -huh. people much like John Pater is a uh, big fan of yours. Uh, Samantha Lilith Eubanks is joining us as well. Nice to have you on board, Samantha. And Wayne Spring, nice to have you with us as well. Now, uh, Miss Heyday, if you want to put it like that, is a Metis artist. Now, for the uninitiated, that means she's an indigenous artist. Now, let's delve right down into that. How did this come around? What, what made you become a Metis artist? So, the, it's Metis, uh, which is our, it, it's a, in, like, indigenous uh, term here. So, there's, um, of course, there's different indigenous peoples here in Canada. You have the Cree, you have the Stony Dakota, you have so many different um, different Indigenous peoples here, ab like ab Aboriginal people here. And my background is Cree, um, but Métis basically means that, you know, I'm part Indigenous and then also not. And in my case, I'm a little bit of everything. So I'm Ukrainian. <laughs> I'm, uh, I did I actually just did my ancestry DNA and it was crazy, the stuff that came back. I'm just a little bit of everything, but... Uh, I definitely resonate very strongly with my Indigenous roots. Um, my mom's side of the family especially have always been very connected to that side of our heritage. So I really found that as I got older into my adult life, I started to kind of delve more into that culture, into that part of myself, and started resonating more with that part of myself. So as a Métis artist, I find that I'm very much drawn to the history of my people, to the culture of my people, and to um, the progress of them. Because um, in, here in Canada, they've had to go through a lot of stuff, and a lot of it has not been good, and a lot of it has been extremely hard. And that generational trauma kind of carries on. So it's it's nice to be representing um, my culture in a way that I feel would make them proud, would not be you know respectful as well but also being able to um, heal those kind of past things while also being um, careful to recognize them and be considerate of that. So as a Métis artist, I'm super proud of that. I'm super proud of my heritage of, of who I am as a person. And I feel like as I grow older, um, it defines who I am as a person more and more. So You know, uh, I, I do apologize, but us Kiwis, we kind of read it as we see it. You know what I mean? So, I, same way. I thought a meme was a meme for the... And I'm not afraid to admit it, okay? It's the, it's the same way. So until somebody tells me different, different, it was a meanie, okay? Okay, well, I, t I tell you what, Amber, you and I actually have something more in common than you might think. Uh, you may be a half blood of one and others put together. Uh, I also, uh, you see, I was born in Phoenix, Arizona. My father was a, an indigenous American Indian where my mother was Scottish. Oh, wow. Yeah, so when I go to the pub, I want to go there for nothing and not pay for anything, and I might give you a haircut on the way out if you're lucky. <laughs> yeah, it's quite true. You, <laughs> you know, but it's, it's, it's a nice thing, though, to be able to find out about your heritage and to be able to uh, be drawn to that in some way regardless of what your background is, I think it's, it's important for us as people to really uh, delve into that, to the past, the present, to the future, and kind of just see where it all started, where you came from, and where you're going. Absolutely, and I tell you what, having a Scottish mother, this will interest you, I found out very, very quickly as a young man what a Scotsman wears under his kilt. Oh yeah, nothing. <laughs> no, his shoes. <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. It really is. Anselm is joining us. Nice to have you on board, Anselm. Coming out of Port Moresby in Papua New Guinea. And believe me, Anselm was the Artist of the Year here at Galaxy last year. So very, very cool to have you on board. Donna Calder, uh, my better half is Angol Angolian and Iroquois. Okay, okay. That's um, quite a mix, actually. Donnie, really, really cool. Love it. Uh, yeah, believe me, when you're half American Indian and half Scottish and you're living here in New Zealand, that's a whole bag in its own right, okay? It really, really is, especially with the indigenous folks of New Zealand, the Maori here in New Zealand, uh, who we like to be able to communicate with in their own Te Reo language, okay? So uh, believe me, uh, it's uh, quite a challenge 
for a man like me to get my tongue around from time to time. Now, I've got to ask you, and believe me, Shona, uh, she's coming out of Cold Lake in Alberta. I don't know whether you'd be familiar with that, but Shona's saying, uh, Amanda, as a fan, how do we get hold of you? Are you on Facebook? Are you on Twitter? Are you on, uh, on Instagram? More importantly, are you a talker? But more, do you respond? Yeah, for sure. I, I think that uh, I'm an independent artist, and in a lot of senses to a lot of people, I'm considered an up-and-coming artist, even though I feel like I've been doing this for quite some time. Um, so definitely, I, I think that um, without the people who support you, you don't have anything. So if you're not engaging with them, if you're not making them feel like they matter, because we certainly do, um, you're already doing it wrong. So I'm all over social media, um, every platform that you can possibly find. Some I engage on more than others, certainly Instagram, Facebook, things like that. I try to get on Twitter. It's just a concept that I've never fully gotten onto myself. But I do from time to time check in there. Um, but definitely when it comes to people commenting and such on my pages, I, I always try to engage with them and make sure that they know that they're seen and they're heard because that matters to them and it certainly matters to me. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. You're going to end up with another 5,000 fans getting in touch with you. You're not, sure to bring it on. you're not going to have, you know, anything else but, you know, sore thumbs. You'll be doing that all day, literally. Uh, Matthias. I got my thumbs ready. Bring it on. <laughs> Joyce, absolutely brilliant. Uh, Mathoya, uh, Matthias is coming from Manhattan Beach in California. He's asking, do you have a merch store? Can I go online and buy product? So I'm just in the process. I actually just, when I released my new single, Sipping on Summer, we just did an overhaul of absolutely everything. So website, everything like that. The next thing that's kind of on the chopping block is a uh, new logo. So along with that, we'll be coming merch. So I'm hoping that late fall to early winter for us here in Canada, so that's going to be around October, November, we should have merch available um, to ship, to sell at shows and things like that as well. So I'll be making sure that we try to keep the shipping as reasonable as possible and stuff like that. But yes, so merch is coming soon. And uh, actually on that note, if anybody has any feedback on some cool stuff they want, what they really like, I always appreciate that because... I know then what it is that you guys want and then what I'm going to put to production to get out there for you. Very, very cool. I tell you what, when you do get some merch, how would you like to send me a shirt? You know, believe me, uh, this is subliminal, but it does work. And I don't know why people do it, but they seem to read what I'm wearing on the day and they're watching the interviews. They go on the interweeby thing at the same time. They check out the merch and before you know it, you've sold koozies, guitar picks, you Absolutely. know, the whole deal. No, no. I will send you a shirt, no problem. Maybe we'll even throw in a hat, too, if you're into that. Love that. Love, love, love that. Uh, snapback, please, not one of those Velcro-y things. I'm getting, yes. old, I'm getting older. I kind of like to keep my hair now. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, but I'll get Barbara to give you all the details. By the way, no, I don't always uh, respond on the interwebby, Facebooky thing and stuff like that, simply because I never get time. I have people do it. But you never know. It could be me. It really could be. I surprised somebody the other day. They went, oh, no, it's Grant's help, isn't it? So I sent a photo of myself. I should have got out of the shower first, though, right? Okay. All right, I'll, I'll take that. All right. Uh, Mount Pearl in Newfoundland is uh, coming in with a question for you, too. Uh, a young lady by the name of Susie coming out of Mount Pearl is asking... What advice would you give a young artist like herself uh, to move her into the stature that you're in right now? I think that you have to, it's a very, very hard industry. Um, social media is both a blessing and a curse in a lot of ways. Um, it allows voices that otherwise might not have been heard to be heard. But in that same regard, it's really easy to be kind of drowned out because there is so much content out there. So focus on obviously being authentic and true to who you are as an artist and as a person, but you want to bring something to the table that's different. So following everybody else and doing what everybody else is doing, that's not going to benefit you in the long run. Uh, you need something that's going to set you apart, but it has to be true. If people are going to resonate more, and it took me a long time to learn this, actually just in probably the last five years, 
I felt like I wrote for a long time just to try to please other people and thinking this is what they wanted to hear and this is what they want to see. Uh, they don't want to see a country music singer who's all tattooed up and all of that other stuff. And the truth is, is this is who I am. This tattooed up girl that writes about real life and like I actually the next EP I'm releasing, I've already got a title called True Story. It's going to very much be about my life and the stories that I things I've went through. And I feel like um, when you are really true to who you are and you are really putting out your truth, people will resonate with that because somebody somewhere has gone through something like it and, and they want to hear that. So the best advice I could give is stay the course, practice, put everything you have into it. And Lainey Wilson had said uh, something along the lines of, you know, like, if you want, you better be willing to work, right? And you, and you really do. You have to really, you have to work for it. You can't just want it. If you want a dream, you got to also work for it. So so that's the best advice I think anybody's given me is uh, to ignore what everybody else thinks that you should do and trust that, that part inside yourself that already knows and do that. Absolutely. And believe me, Amber, I usually tell people, believe in yourself, follow your dreams, Stay single-minded and practice, practice, practice. You will get there. And uh, unfortunately, like Amber, she's ended up in New Zealand talking to me at the end of that. So, you know. Be grateful for it. We're good. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. Dan Washburn is joining us as well. Nice to have you on board, Dan. It really, really is. And uh, looking forward to catching up with you again in the near future as well. We need to have a catch-up, brother. We really do. <clears throat> also, uh Tim Steinreich is joining us as well. Nice to have you on board, Tim. It really is. Now, Poison. Really? Does your hub husband know about this? I've heard about an incident that happened with mushrooms in Australia just recently. What's the story, Amber? So, actually, on that note, when I wrote this song, my husband said, what are you thinking? You can't put a song out like this. Everybody's going to think it's about me, and they're going to think that I'm just a jerk. And I said, well, it isn't about you. He's like, well, they don't know that. So this is my opportunity to clear the air. This song is actually not about my husband. Uh, a friend of mine was in an extremely toxic relationship. And um, I, I have a very good listening ear. So I, I pride myself on the fact that people um, tend to confide in me with certain stuff. And, I, and I, I think that's an honor. So this was one of those occasions. And... I just thought, oh, I said, you know, this guy's just poison. It's just poison. And so when I went to go and we were tar starting the pre-production stuff with my producer out of Calgary at the time, Russell Broom, um, I presented him with this idea. And Russell Broom is an uh, amazing, amazing man. He is just a man of all talents. Production, guitar, you name it. He, he was a uh, Jan Arden's and still is Jan Arden's right-hand man for a very long time. So I came to him with this idea and... Uh, it's still to this day probably one of my favorite songs. It's got such a cool vibe. It's just different. Um, and yeah, I love it. I love the idea of what it, you know, what it tells you is when, when you're with somebody, it's essentially like poison. It's just killing you slowly. You know what I mean? So, so that was the whole idea behind it. We wrote it together. And yeah, I'm super, super proud of this track. It's, it's, uh, it's one of my favorites off of Holding On To A Memory. You're right, here we go, it's 107 FM, joined today, and I'm humbled by Amber Hayday. Here's Poison. <laughs> How are you feeling, you okay? Doing great. Nice, really? nice. How many countries are tuned in? Uh, 162. 162 countries tuned in right now. Oh, that's awesome. That's not bad, eh? How many cities? 2819. 2819 cities around the world. Bingo. Brilliant. Love it, love it, love it. Terry Van Cannon's in the house. Nice to have you on board, Terry. Uh, believe me. Uh, Amber, if you ever need a slide steel master, Terry Van Cannon comes out of North Carolina, and believe me, this man is the bomb. Oh, good to know. There's nothing I love more than a beautiful, sad-sounding sad uh, slide steel. So that's something I'll keep in my back pocket. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. Absolutely. And I, he does a, a killer sleepwalk as well. He, he loves collaborating, too. He loves collaborating as well. Yeah. He really does. Um, honestly, I think that uh, in America, 
North Carolina is becoming the new hub of talent. Believe me, we get so many artists coming out of there. It's just yeah, ridiculous, and I'm so grateful. I have an aunt that lives out there, so maybe I just need to plan a little trip and go check it out for myself. Yeah, because I've been watching that area for a long time. Nice. Go and land in Greensboro. Hmm, yeah. Other than yeah. Charlotte. Of course, I've done, like, the Nashville thing, like every other country artist and all that. I actually, when I was 20, we drove from here <clears throat> in Stony Plain all the way to Mexico, and I had never seen the ocean or anything at that point in my life, and so I got to see literally everything. I went all the way across the United States, all the way down through Arizona to the Baja, Mexico Sea of Cortez. It was an epic, epic trip if I ever did have one, that's for sure. Nice, nice. Well, you know, I, I think... Nashville is expensive. It is. <laughs> Just it is. quietly. And it's beautiful and it's great if you want to catch live music, but I also feel like you can to Orleans and like you said, North Carolina, Texas, um, places like that, and you, you almost get a more genuine experience because it's not all the razzle dazzle, right? You get exactly. you get the real real red dirt country when you go down to Texas and things like exactly. that. So exactly. You see I, I went to the Green Old Opry. And, oh, uh, did you? Yeah, I got my fifty dollars too. Would you believe? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I man. wanted to the Grand Old Opry when I was down there, and I didn't end up making it. My baby boy was not ten months old when I went, and I was so homesick. Uh, I'm supposed to stay for fourteen days, and I made it for ten, and I just had to come home because it was it was really hard. That was my first trip away from him, and I think I bit off a little more than I could chew at that time. I um, usually ask country artists that have been to the Opry. What's your favorite place in the Opry? And they usually say the Green Dot, right? For me, it's actually the walkway between the backstage and the stage itself. The the amount <laughs> of history that... Uh, uh, yeah, I can agree with that too. Believe me, I, I stood on that gangway and just breathed in that history. You know what I mean? It'd be remiss if we ever That's like even I went to the Hall of Fame and things like that when we were down there. And so that was like a religious experience to be able to just take in. You know, we we saw an exhibit at that time and it had like Patsy Cline exhibit and it had she used to collect salt and pepper shakers <laughs> and it was the coolest thing seeing all these different salt and pepper and, shakers. Amber, Amber, I've got to let you hold that thought. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Salt and pepper shakers. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. You know, people, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, people uh, accumulate some very strange things over the years, don't you think? Uh, my deal is I don't like dolls or clowns. So I don't. You don't? No, like the, the, those little ventriloquist puppets too scare the living heck out of me. I don't want nothing to do with them. Okay. Like them. Well, actually, I've got a friend of mine that makes a living out of being a ventriloquist as well. Uh, he, he really is good and he's world renowned. He really, really is. Uh, but believe me, I hate dolls and I hate clowns. Barbara's house, she's got dolls. I've <laughs> seen them, you know what I mean? She led me into this room. It was the most annoying period of time in my life I've ever had at Barbara's house. Yeah, you know, I, I went running. I really did. But I can relate to that. One of my best friends is a singer-songwriter as well named Erin Haley. And she likes to send me scary doll head stuff and whatnot all the time just to get under my skin. So thanks for that, Erin, and the nightmares that I have. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very, very cool. Of course, we are in the era of Jason right now, too, by the way. We've gone through... Uh, uh, last month, next month, uh, and you, it spells out Jason, if you know what I mean, January, August, September, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean, so uh, it's scary, scary monthly times. Uh, <laughs> John Pater says, Jerry Van, uh, Terry Van Cannon is the slide master. Well, yes. you know, John, got to agree with you, that man is such a talented man in his own right, literally, and uh, love, love, love him. Uh, Grant's house has the least one clown, uh, no, only me. I'm the only clown and I don't wear makeup in my house. Believe me. <laughs> the only one that wears makeup in my place is probably the dog once it gets caught. <laughs> <laughs> really. Literally. Uh, but having said that, 
I am joined today by Amber Hayde, and I did offer a psych psychologist at the end of this. I think she's starting to consider it quite <laughs> heavily now. Not yet, but maybe. We'll see. We still maybe. have time. Yeah, either that or a stiff drink, right? There you go. A stiff drink I could definitely handle. I'll take that. Nice. Nice. Believe me, uh, most people need at least, yeah, you know, um, ten of those by the time they're finished with me. So I wouldn't blame you for that. And uh, Jimmy, if she uh, comes upstairs a little issy face, it's my fault. Blame me. Okay? <laughs> you can do that. Besides... She's sipping on summer. That's right. That's a good segue, don't you think? I think it sure is. Yeah, that was very witty the way you put that. So before you tell us all about sipping on summer, I want to know, as an engineer, where are you getting this recorded? All of your work here, who's your engineer, who's your master, who's your producer? So uh, my producer is one of my good friends, Jeff what I would consider one of my closest friends in the music industry. Um, he's extremely well known within our Canadian country music industry. His name is Travis Switzer. Um, for his company is called Boulder Music. And uh, he has been a friend of mine. I actually found a picture of us from, I think I was maybe 19, playing an acoustic show together like way back in the day. And um, so he got into producing, it's been a few years now, but that being said, not a super long time. However, he certainly has a knack for it. He's played for anybody and everybody that you can possibly imagine here in Canada. Um, and he's actually in the Hall of Honours here in Canada as well. He's just a phenomenal person, um, hilarious, great sense of humour. And I find that being able to write with him, actually you guys said that you told me you played a little demo I had sent you earlier called Winnebago today. And that was actually written with Travis. And so when I, Travis had listened to Sippin' on Summer, I had actually written Sippin' on Summer again with my friend Johnny, and we wrote it for a contest for a local radio station here out of Edmonton called Piss and Country. And so they were looking for a summer song, and I was like, hey, well, so we got to fit with that theme. And we kind of came up with the idea, and I had that idea of like, you know, play me a little Dina Carter. And I'm like, Let, let's play off of that, that kind of 90s country vibe. And so the song kind of wrote itself, if I'm being honest. Like, we, it was another one of those, like, it was on paper within seconds. We recorded an acoustic video version of it. Um, and we ended up posting it on their page. And just on their page, like, as it is now, I think it's like, I don't even know, like, 40, just, it's over 40,000 views on their page for the video, which for an indie artist is awesome, right, when you're not really well known. And we knew that we had something. Um, it wasn't a deep song. It wasn't a song that required a lot of thought. But sometimes in the summertime, that's what you want. You And this is the way Travis put it to me. He's like, when it's summer and you're having a beer or you're whatever, you don't really want to think. You just want to, like, listen to a good tune that makes you feel good and enjoy the sunshine. And so this is pretty much exactly what that song was meant for. And I feel like we achieved it. Um, I've had the honor of, of recording with some pretty incredible people over the years. And I... They've all come in at a different season in my life and have reflected that season extremely well. And I have to say that for Travis, that's 100% true. He brought out who I am, I think, as an artist in ways that I, I'm not sure has been brought out in recent years, that's for sure. He, he just, he put my voice, like what I think I sound like when I sing live, that's what he brought onto that record. And he gave it a little bit of a cool kind of swampy CCR undertone, which I was really digging. I love that because I do a lot of blues when I do my live shows and stuff too. And so Sippin' on Summer just kind of like had a life of its own. And it became this this anthem for summer, which was great. And it's had positive feedback from people who have been following me for years. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm really grateful for it. And I'm, I'm so looking forward to working with Travis more in the future. Even the engineer, Brendan Lyons, he's a, another incredible... Um, He's actually a drummer here out of Edmonton, and he plays with the likes of Gord Bamford and stuff. He's just an incredible person as well. So we had some really amazing, amazing talent that worked on this record from the background vocals to the instrumentation to production to engineering to everything. I was very fortunate to work with, like, the creme de la creme of musicians and engineers and that. And that. So um, I'm looking forward to kind of following that theme moving forward. But I think moving forward, the next things that you can expect from me, I'm still going to have a little bit of that light and airy kind of stuff, but I want to I wanna dive a little deeper uh, into some real gritty stuff. 
and get a little personal and bring that to the surface as well. So it's going to be a happy little mix of, of all of the things, I think. You know, uh, absolutely loving that. By the way, Gord Banford is a Galaxy artist as well. We we know Gord very, very well. And um, you know something? You do have legends watching this interview right now too, by the way, in the Hammond Brothers, in the Hall of Fame. So uh, they're taking very, very specific interest in Amber Heyday. This is your latest track too, by the way, and believe me, it is rocketing up the charts here at Galaxy. I play you in my car. I have this track in my car, and I play you on the way home when I go home at night. If I go home at night, some nights I don't, you know what I mean? Uh, but believe me, absolutely love, love, loving this. Currently 1,374 requests for it, and climbing. It'll be more tomorrow, really well. Here is Amber Heyday on Galaxy, sipping on summer. It's not bad, 1,374 requests for it. Not at all, I'll take it. I'm not grateful bad. for that. Um, the, the numbers you really want to hear are the numbers at the end of this interview. Okay? Yeah. Um, because I will let you know how many people are tuned in listening to this on the interwebby thing through the radio, if you know what I mean. And believe me, Ember, I think you'll be very, very surprised. I'm already, like, this has already been such a amazing experience. I'm really happy that you guys asked me to do this. It means a whole lot. So thank you for that. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure, Amber. It really, really is. And, of course, uh, again, we love Cheryl Schofield and Kaylee. We really, really mm -hmm. do. So, yeah, you know, these guys do such a great job. They only bring us the best artists. You know what I mean? Yeah, they don't have a, they don't represent a whole lot. And I, and I think that was what drew me to them is because, you're not just another number and it's really easy to become just another paycheck or just another number to somebody mm. in this industry mm. and you can't blame them everybody's got mouths to feed and bills to pay and that kind of thing but with Kaylee and, and Cheryl it's it's a totally different thing it's very much it's more personal um they genuinely care and to me that's what sets you apart when you actually have the heart behind you know the talent and the and the contacts and all of that that matters and it shows them what they do well amber let me tell you something that is very very true here at galaxy uh barbara gets about 150 200 submissions a day and we have to literally whittle it down down to what we can fit in in a week mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what i mean and we're pretty much booked up honestly we're looking what November, September, late September, early November, something like that. That's how far out we are with bookings at the moment. Uh, but once it gets past Barbara and production, the boys in production, they, they realize we can only do so much in the same mm -hmm. little amount of time. Then we submit that to a board meeting. And believe me, any given board meeting, it could be 12, could be eight people on the board. And their only interest, and believe me, they have no radio knowledge at all. They have all walks of life, but their only concern is our image. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So it has to be the best. And we only play the best of the best of indie artists from around the world. And we're priding ourselves in that. And You have some variety that's what's wonderful about it i've listened to your guys' station quite a bit actually since i discovered you since with the help of, of kaylee and cheryl and i just love that there's such a contrast between what you guys offer it's not just one thing so many things and it's such an awesome thing to listen to it's refreshing to be honest i i think it would be remiss of us if we put ourselves in one pigeonhole or one genre you know what for I mean? sure there is so much good talent in so many vast different genres it, it but they're, really they're good. They're doing what you guys are doing with such a broad range and i think that's what sets you apart and and for me as an artist but as an indie artist we don't we we have to work extra hard because there's nobody putting money behind us to try to get us to where we need to be right so when you have people that are willing to kind of go out on a whim for you and try that means everything because we don't what do we have without that well, Ember, after we finish this, I want to talk to you about something else that will help promote your career as well, if that's all right with you.
Okay. Really don't know why that happened, but uh, it happened anyway. We'll try that again, what do you reckon, and just see what we can come up with. I think this desk is on its way out and we may need to buy yet another one. Uh, that'll be three this year so far, so I do very, very well. It's like bowling. I might get a pin or two every now and again if I'm lucky, uh, but even a blind squirrel gets a nut from time to time. Uh, and unfortunately, Amber got me today, and I feel sorry for, for that. Amber, it is such a pleasure to meet you, and I'm absolutely love, love, loving everything you're doing right now. But I do have to ask you, got anything in the can? Are we looking at anything in the near future coming out? So as it stands right now, um, everything that I've done in, in the last little bit here, Sipping on Summer, I've had the fortune of having some sponsors that have jumped on board to help me, but as an indie artist, primarily everything's come out of pocket. Uh, it's certainly not cheap to record here and to promote your recordings. Um, but that being said, uh, I am applying, I'm in the process of applying for some Indigenous grants and things of that nature to try to help me carry on with my music. Um, regardless, even if I'm recording and releasing some acoustic tracks just to keep some new music coming out there, I absolutely will because I, I just want to be able to be heard. Obviously, that's what I do this for is to have what it is that I sing about be heard. So that's a concept that I've been kind of revisiting again. And I've always liked the idea of maybe doing an acoustic album as well. Um, but I definitely I've got I cannot even tell you how many songs I have in my back pocket right now. Um, as I've mentioned, Johnny Quickstad is his name. He's uh, he's who I write a lot with. I write with Johnny Quickstad and my my best friend Aaron Haley. They're both two my my very best friends in this industry, and and we co-write a lot together. And Johnny and I have uh, really come a long way from where we started to where we are now. And it just it's it's a nice dynamic because I can tell him, oh, I'm thinking this kind of riff, and I can you know make it. A weird sound come out of my mouth and the guy knows exactly what I'm talking about. Two seconds later he's playing it on guitar. So together we, we created some magic, that's for sure. And we have a lot of other ideas on the go. We have a lot of other things that we have underway um, song-wise and things that we've already written that we haven't put out to the world that I feel like need to be heard. So yes, there is so much more to be heard there's so much more to do and i'm hoping that within the next three to four months i should have at least another couple singer singles on the block to follow up sipping on summer so within the fall here i plan on releasing something for sure very very cool now i want to give a special shout out to everybody in canada that is suffering from the wildfires right now uh, believe me we're thinking of you especially in Kelowna and places like that uh, please please take care of yourselves and uh, evacuate when needed to evacuate, okay? Be safe. Make the right choice right there. Uh, but in the meantime, Tracy, coming out of Ottawa, is asking, Amber, are you looking at gigging? Are you doing tours at the moment? Uh, so, again, it's been, it's been really hard because live music in Alberta, in, a, like, a lot of, like, places that are close to me, is not... Like, we're in our busy season right now where it's festivals and everything like that. For me, I haven't released anything for quite a while. It's really easy to fall between the cracks when you don't do that. So I'm just finally starting to get that momentum building up again and getting everything rolling, which is a great feeling. Um, but it also takes a lot of effort and a, and a lot of trial and error on my part. So I'm in the process right now of trying to book as many shows as I possibly can. And that's going to be announced as they come, of course. But the goal is is that I'm hoping that to get a couple more singles under my belt here, that next summer will be my busiest one yet, and that I want to make it out to the East Coast um, as much. Like I want to get as far as I possibly can. Um, right now, obviously, with travel and everything like that, like as everybody knows, COVID kind of killed everything for everybody for a while, and I feel like so many people are still recuperating from that. So live music venues and things of that nature they're just not a thriving thing right now. They're slowly finding their way back, but it is a slow process because everybody felt the hurt of what happened, you know, just a couple of years ago here now. So, so yeah, the, the answer to that is that um, everything's still in the works, but I'm very hopeful that, you know, this coming year, this next summer is going to be my busiest one yet. And I'm going to do everything in my power to make my way across Canada and beyond if I'm able to, to, um, 
let people see me live because to me, um, you can listen to my records, but I have always felt that my live shows is where I really shine and where you really get to know who I am as an artist. And I love nothing more than to perform for people. So I want to get as far as I possibly can. So, Amber, uh, believe me, I've got to ask this. Uh, how long have you been performing live on stage? For me, it sounds like you're very, very comfortable. You've been there for years. Is that right? Yeah. So I've been, I started singing in bars and things when I turned 18 years old. I recorded my first record when I was 18 years old. And I just turned 37. So... That's a while. I've been playing for a hot minute, and I've, I've played in dive bars, I've played large-scale stages, I've played corporate events to anything, you can, and I'm still known to catch a good karaoke night or two as well, because I feel like you got to enjoy those too. So um, to answer that, yeah, I've been playing for a long time, and I feel like um, with ex time comes experience, and that has afforded me to be a better performer because I have had that trial and error. I've learned those lessons and I'm learning every day still, but I do have that under my belt in a way that allows me to be a lot more confident and comfortable on stage and, and more sure of myself as an artist. Now, <clears throat> Pixie, uh, Pixie's coming out of Australia, out of Brisbane, Brizzy in uh, Australia. She's asking, when you go on stage, now let's set the scene here, Pixie, okay? Uh, the crowd's there, the music, the smoke, the lights are all going. When you just about to step on stage, do you get the butterflies? Always. Always. And I would, I hope that never changes. I think that that adrenaline rush that you get is everything. That, that, that hype that you're building, it's, it's such, uh, it's like I always tell everybody, it's the greatest high you'll ever get stepping on a stage in front of people, and better yet, when they actually care about what it is that you're doing, there's nothing that compares to that thrill. There's nothing that compares to that high. It's just something out of this world. So absolutely, I get the butterflies. I still get the nerves. I always try to kind of like center myself on show days because I tend to get a little bit frazzled and just, you know. And then the minute I step on stage, it's like this immediate calm. And so there's like, there's this, there's Amber Hady, the version of myself that you're talking to now. And then there's the Amber Hady that steps on stage and they're, they're one and the same, but they're different. You know, it's, it's a totally, it's a totally different thing. Once you, I have that microphone up in my mouth and I'm, I'm tearing up that stage. So definitely get the butterfly. You know, Amber, I, I can absolutely relate to that. I really, really can. Uh, I can't sing. I got to be honest. Well, actually I sing tenor or maybe 12 miles away from anybody that can hear me. That's the truth. But, uh, lucky in my profession, you see, I used to be a nightclub DJ as well as radio, and uh, a lot over the years I found that radio announcers are very, very comfortable in a little office with a nice little window that overlooks the ocean or whatever. You know what I mean? They can do that, but you put them on a stage in front of people and their mouth dries up, <laughs> and their bottoms become watertight or something like that. They just can't do the job. Whereas I was brought up in front of people, talking to people all the time, being a nightclub DJ back in the day as well. Uh, so my bosses used to say, hey, listen, how would you like to go down to the showrooms or showgrounds and introduce this band? And I got to meet so many, so many, many famous bands just introducing them. Uh, but, you know, I'm very, very comfortable in front of maybe 150,000 people, no worries, that's fine. You know, 20,000, yeah, not a worry. Put me in front of maybe 30 retirees and I'm stuffed, done, can't mm -hmm. do it. You know what I mean? Unfortunately, no music. I did this once for a, uh, a business, retired business thing. They wanted to know about Galaxy and all that and come and have a speech. And for about an hour and a half, I really had knocky knees, you know what I mean? These people were serious. They were looking at me like I was, yeah, oh my goodness. But we got through it, I've got to be honest. But that was the most challenging time ever entertaining anybody would have to be these older folks scrutinizing me, wanting to know what made Galaxy so famous, you know what I mean? So, for sure, uh, sure. It depends on the crowd too. For it sure. does. Make or break you sometimes. Absolutely. Uh, but yet again, at the same time, I mean, you can get the electric feeling coming from the crowd that you just transpose right on back. It's, it's a, you know, real rounds and 
wheels and roundabouts and stuff like that. It, it's feeding off the crowd, the crowd's feeding off you. It just energises the whole evening. And believe me, I think it's very, very successful. Stephen on Stephen John Ireland is joining us as well as Marion Peterson. Hello, Marion. Been a while. Nice to have you back. It really, really is. Uh, now, Amber, we're coming to the pinnacle of today's interview, and I really must humbly thank you for taking the time out to talk to us down here in the Antipodes. And uh, I got to find out about you. Tell me about you. You was written as uh, I really wanted to write like a girl power kind of you know <laughs> I don't know how to word this without swearing so the best to give it your best shot go on give it you, to us you know what I, like woman power I don't need your crap get gone I'm good we, I feel like, you know, women, especially in the, and as, as a woman, obviously, I'm super proud of this. We've really found our voice, and we're not afraid to say what we feel, to be empowered in who we are. And you was kind of a little dose of that. Uh, it was written with my friend Will Randall. We wrote it at my kitchen table. And it was just, I had this idea of kind of a more hitting the bluesier side of my voice, which again, as I mentioned, I do a lot when I play my live shows. I've been told by multiple artists over the years at different live jams and stuff, you should have been a blues artist. I'm like, why can't I be both, right? Like I can be blues and country, they kind of go hand in hand. So you is very much that. It's just like a kind of of yours kind of song where I'm done with you. I don't need this anymore. You can you can say what you want. I'm done. I'm gone. And so that's the whole idea behind you. And I love it. I will always love it. I think it's a got it's a sassy little song. And I'm I'm a little bit sassy. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. So it suits me just fine. <laughs> Amber, I absolutely love that. Now a little bit of side product for you here. I can't get through a breakfast show just recently without playing it. And you're at 2,155 requests. Tomorrow's going to get exponentially more here at Galaxy. Is Amber Hayday joining us live? And you. <laughs> How are you feeling, Amber? You okay? Yeah, I'm doing excellent. Nice. Very cool. Nice. Got any good dad jokes for me? Not off the top of my head. <laughs> the queen of that stuff. But you have me stumped right now. I... And the only jokes that I tell over are super inappropriate. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, let, let me give you one. It may or may not be appropriate, but we'll, we'll, we'll try anyway. Uh, uh, you remember Captain Kirk from Star Trek? I do. William Shatner? Yeah, I see Trudeau has made him... Star Trek, or Star Trek. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah well, um, <clears throat> I see Trudeau, your politician, <laughs> for want of a better word, has made him recall his lingerie line. <laughs> you know what, Dolly Parton, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. the reason being is um, apparently Shatner Panties isn't a good name. Okay, I will give you, that is a good one. That is a very good one. You know, Dolly Parton said years ago that there's like two things she never comments on. It's religion and politics. And I feel like that's probably sound advice when you're an artist, because especially in this day and age, it's really hard to have an opinion on anything without being nailed to the wall. So it's, uh, as much as you want to, sometimes it's almost better not to. <laughs> well, I, I, I honestly... <laughs> from a woman who has an opinion about everything. Like I, when you <laughs> actually, some friends of mine had their photo taken with uh, Dolly Parton a couple of weeks ago. Uh, yeah. Are you familiar with the heels? I am, yeah. Yeah, Bobby, Brittany and Kyla, the, they, yeah. went, they went down there and they had their photo. I think they might have something in the pipeline, to be honest. <laughs> I really do. I, I'm a huge Dolly Parton fan. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> All of all of the the OGs, the legends. I think that you know they really paved the way for us. And and I guess it depends on what area you come from, who you're going to claim your legend is. Some people claim it's Shania Twain and otherwise. But for me, it was like I remember my dad listening to Waylon and all that, and I just oh that stuff. I get it. Just I get it. Anyway, 
Ember, we're going to wrap it up right now, but please don't go away. <laughs> That's right, you're right, here we go, it's the 107 FM, and today, absolutely elated, I am very, very humbled to be joined by Amber Hayday, got to give a shout out to Cheryl Scafield and Kaylee Amanda, uh, we love what you guys do at Catabano as well, believe me, really, really do, and yes, we only play the best here at Galaxy, Amber, it has been an absolute pleasure to have you on board with me today, Will you put yourself through this again? Will you come back again? Oh, absolutely. I thoroughly enjoyed this today, and it's been an awesome experience. I would love to be back on your show sometime. Anytime. You guys call me anytime. Well, we would love to be able to release uh, new music with you, and we'd be very, very honoured to be able to follow you through your career from this point onwards anyway. And uh, we would love you too. To, uh, are you familiar with the uh, Galaxy Artist Facebook page? I am, yes. Use it, use it, use it, use it. Did I mention use it? Believe me, there are so many people we go and have a look in there, and there's people from every walks of life. It could be a label, it could be a venue manager, venue owner, anything could happen. It could be somebody weird like me that just wants to go and have a nosy as well, you know what I mean? Uh, but if you've got a new video, you've got a new track, got a new logo, maybe you've got something new to be able to, as April, put it up there, let's, you know, do that because it is free for artists <clears throat> it really really is and uh, the more times pe honestly if you're going to the opening of a shoebox put it up there you know what I mean uh, because people want to know who you are want to follow you want to be able to see what you're doing what's new what isn't new what's on your mind even you know what I mean yeah. it's part of that. <clears throat> it's part of the galaxy family and we want to welcome you into our family and believe me it is such an honor to be able to have you with us it really really is love 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 your work and today it means a whole lot to me thank you absolute pleasure my friend it really really is in the meantime please don't go anywhere because uh, everybody's going to rush the monitors now want to take pickies of you and uh, we're going to put that into a movie barbara's going to make a movie out of it you'll get a copy of everything we do today and uh, don't forget, it's going to go on Facebook and everything like that as well. Uh, I usually say to people, when you get your movie, show it to people you don't like. <laughs> Sounds good to me. I've got a couple of people I can send it to. Yeah, well, you know, honestly, let's, let's break it down. Friends and family are going to love it no matter what because it's you, right? Okay, if you show it to people you don't like usually puts a fire under their bodies, and before you know it, they're getting in touch with us going, hey, listen, I've got a band too. Yeah, that's true, that's true. You know, and then it's down to Barbara to reject it. Yeah, yeah. It, I'll, I'll just put a little Facebook message up to you, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, absolutely brilliant. Anyway, folks, it has been an absolute wonderful day today. Thank you for joining us. Uh, please join Barbara and I between six... Well, actually, 5.30. I know she's not going to be 5 o'clock. She'll make me make the cup of tea anyway. But between 5.30 and 10 o'clock in the morning for the breakfast show, yes, guaranteed. You will hear Amber Heyday in there. Absolutely guaranteed that. And I tell you what, absolutely brilliant, brilliant day. It's going to be Friday coming into a weekend. So enjoy your day. From Barbara, of course, it's always goodbye. From me, it's happy radio, everyone. Have a great day. Galaxy, galaxy.